and subtract mixed numbers. We're going to start with a story problem and do it with a, a model and then with steps. So on Monday, let's pretend that you hiked two and three-eighths miles. And on Tuesday, you hiked one and a quarter miles. And you wanted to know how much that was altogether. So you're going to be adding two mixed numbers. First, we will model Monday by showing two wholes and three-eighths. And then Tuesday was one whole and one-fourth. In order to be able to add the fraction pieces, you know that you have to make an exchange so that they're all the same color or denominator. So you're going to exchange one-fourth into blue pieces, which would become two-eighths. Now you can add the holes and add the fractions. Let's start with the fractions. I see one, two, three, four, five-eighths. And I see three holes. So these two mixed numbers together um, equal three and five-eighths. Let's show the steps that we did over here. We um, first found the multiples of 8 and the multiples of 4 because we needed to find our least common multiple and we determined that that was 8. So that is going to become the denominator on both of our fractions. Well this one already has 8 as a denominator so it doesn't change. And in this one in order to get from 4 to 8 I multiplied by 2. So the whole number stays the same. It would become 1 and 2 eighths. And then I add the fractions. 3 eighths plus 2 eighths is 5 eighths. And the whole, then I'm going to add the whole numbers. 2 plus 1 is 3. So we see that I change the denominators to make them um, have common denominators. Then I added the fractions. Then I added the whole numbers. And if you needed to, you would of course simplify at this point. But 5 eighths is already in simplest form. So we are done. So let's do another example of adding mixed numbers. Actually, subtracting mixed numbers. We're going, we have, in one month, it rained four and three quarters inch, inches in Lynchburg. And in the same month, it rained two and a half inches in Roanoke. And we want to know how much more rain did Lynchburg get than Roanoke. So we can draw it with a model. We have the four and three fourths inches for, to show for Lynchburg, and the two and one half inches for Roanoke. Now, I um, can't compare these yet because they are not the same color or denominator. So I'm going to make an exchange and turn my pink one-half piece into two-fourths because one-half is equivalent to two-fourths. And now I can compare. I can find the difference by seeing that there's one extra fourth piece here, or doing three-fourths minus two-fourths is one-fourth. And then I can compare my whole numbers. 4 minus 2 is 2. So the difference is 2 and 1 quarters inches. So let's see the steps over here if we are not using a model. First, you're going to change the denominators if needed. So I wrote the multiples of 4 and the multiples of 2 and found the least common multiple was 4. So that's going to be my denominator for both fractions. This fraction doesn't change because it's already in fourths. And this fraction, I know that 1 half is equivalent to 2 fourths. So that, and the whole number does not, it doesn't change. So then I'm going to subtract the fractions. 3 fourths minus 2 fourths is 1 fourth. And 4 minus, whoops, this is supposed to be minus, 4 minus 2 is 2. And then if I needed to simplify, I would do that now, but 1 fourth is already in simplest form. There are two different kinds of problems that you want to watch out for. So here's the first kind. When your sum contains an improper fraction. Let's see how that would happen. Um, pretend that there was a farmer who grew four and three quarters tons of sweet potatoes and also grew five and one thirds tons of pumpkins. And he wanted to know how much that was altogether. So the first step would be to change your denominator so that they match. And we found that the least common multiple of four and three was 12. I had to multiply by 3 to get 12, so 4 and 3 fourths becomes 4 and 9 twelfths. And I had to multiply by 4 here to get 12, so I'm going to do that to the top, and that becomes 5 and 4 twelfths. And then my sum I would get by adding my fractions, which would be 13 twelfths, 
because 9 plus 4 is 13, and my whole number would be 9. Now we've got this really strange problem because we have a um, fraction that's bigger than 1, or that's an improper fraction. So we're going to model what you would do in this case. You can see here we have 13 twelfths, and we're going to make an exchange by changing 12 twelfths into the one whole, and when you do that, 12 of them become the one whole and you have one left over. So the new mixed number that this becomes is 1 and 1 12. So you can show that here that then the 13 12 is now 1 and 1 12 and we already had not 9 holes so you can add those together. 9 plus 1 is 10 and then I keep the fraction will be 1 1 twelfth. So my um, total sum is 10 and 1 twelfths tons. Here's another example when we get a sum that has an improper fraction. And we'll talk about the steps of how you can solve it. Um, you can see here that I was ready to add them, but I didn't have the same denominator. So I changed the thirds into six by finding the least common multiple. And then I went ahead and added five six plus four six to get nine sixths. Now there are two different ways that we can choose to think about how to turn, how to change this or simplify it. First, turn the improper fractions into a mixed number using division and add the mixed number to the whole number. So I know that 9 6 can also be read as 9 divided by 6. 6 goes into 9 one time. I get 3 and then the mixed number that this is is 1 and 3 6 or 1 and a half if we simplify it. 1 and 3 6 simplifies to 1 and a half. So you're going to add that one and a half to the seven holes that you already had, and you get eight and one half. Another way to think about it is the second way. Think about taking a one whole fraction from the improper fraction and sending it to the whole number. So I'm going to think about pulling out one whole. And in this case, since our fraction is broken up into six, the one whole would be six so I'm going to pull out that 6, 6 and send it over here to the one whole fraction. Taking it away from here and sending it over here. So my whole number now becomes 8. 9, 6 minus 6, 6 is 3, 6 or simplified to 8 and a half. Whichever way you choose to think about it, we're still going to get the same simplified sum. The next kind of problem to watch out for is if you have a subtraction problem that requires borrowing. Um, here's an example modeled and then we'll do the steps um, over here second. You can see that we're trying to do um, 2 and 1 third minus 1 and 5 6. So I've modeled 2 and 1 third. Now we need to get our denominators to be the same so we're going to make an exchange and you can see that here. I'm going to turn the 1 third piece into 2 6 done that here. Now, I, if I'm trying to take away 5 6, I still don't have 5 6 that I can pull out. So I'm going to have to make another exchange. I'm going to have to change this one whole into 6 6 and add that to the 2 6 I already had. So here I have changed the 2 and 2 6 into 1 and 8 6. And if you counted this, this would be 8 6 right here. So now we have 1 and 8 6. And then I can find the difference. I can pull out 1 and 5, 6. So let's find that. This would be 1, and then I can go over here and get 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to pretend that I'm taking out that much, and then I'm left with 1, 2, 3, 6, which simplifies to 1 half. And over here I just did this subtraction problem. 8, 6 minus 5, 6 is 3, 6. The, um, there is no whole number because 1 minus 1 is 0, and then we know that 3 6 simplifies to 1 half. Let's do one more example of when we have to um, use borrowing and subtraction and talk about the steps as we do it. 
First of all, change the denominators if you need to. In this case, my denominators did not match yet. They were 12 and 4. So I changed 5 and 3 fourths into 5 and 9 twelfths. Multiply by 3 on the denominator, multiply by 3 on the numerator. Next, I'm going to borrow a one whole fraction from the whole number. So I'm going to take away, I'm going to um, see here that I have 9 twelfths and I can't take away 9 twelfths. So that tells me I need to borrow. I'm going to take away 12 twelfths from my whole number and add that 12 twelfths to my fraction. So when you take away 12 twelfths or 1, you might even want to write that as taking away 1 whole. The new whole number becomes 5 here. And then I'm going to add 12 twelfths plus 5 twelfths. 12 plus 5 is 17. So now we, we have renamed or borrowed 6 and 5 twelfths into 5 and 17 twelfths. These are equivalent fractions. Then I can do 17 minus 9 is 8. And I keep the same denominator. 5 minus 5 is 0, so I have no whole number. So I renamed, let's go back and look. I renamed the one whole fraction on top. That's right here when I added the 12 twelfths to the 5 twelfths. I renamed it to 17 twelfths. Then I subtracted, and now my last step is to simplify. I'm going to divide by the greatest common factor, which is 4, and I get 2 thirds is my answer. And I'm hoping that some of you th um, sort of made the, thought that this sounded a little bit familiar. To me, these steps of when you borrow something and send it over, rename it, s reminded me of time. When you had a um, subtraction problem with time where you didn't have enough minutes on the top to subtract the minutes on the bottom, you had to borrow an hour and turn it into 60 minutes and add it to these, to these minutes here. It's the same thing. I'm renaming the whole. I'm borrowing a one whole and adding it to, I'm renaming it and adding it to the fraction that I already had there.